Hello and happy Sunday. My name is the Reverend Jen Pilot. I'm your chaplain here at Seabury. I come to you today to share a reflection that I came across by a gentleman named Duo Dickinson. He is an architect in the southern part of Connecticut, and if the name doesn't sound familiar, you're certainly familiar with his work. He built these beautiful wood rolling things, I think is the technical term, that house our quilts, as well as some work at the Commons for the diocese. He writes this morning a reflection called, Our Altars Are Stripped. I'd like to share that with you now. It's Sunday and churches are empty, when humans might need them more than they used to. In a place of plenty, with no expectation of inadequacy, shelves have been stripped like the altars of Good Friday. Our shelves may be empty, but our minds are full to bursting. Ironies are cheap on the internet. Memes live by sarcastic mockery. Politics is about taunting the feeble. Ignorance is louder in sequestration. But there is no answer, because this may be life-saving or fully ridiculous, and we can never know but we are controlling those things we can and know how exquisitely clearly what we cannot. It's a great good thing to think, read, and write. It's stocking the shelves of your brain. But that is not enough. We need to communicate, contact, share, be more than ourselves, but perhaps get infected with something that might hurt us unto death or not. In truth, these last five years of Lenten mornings have been silent for me after my sixth decade, because I began to know what I did not know. I had cleaned out all the shelves of a life spent stocking marriage, children, a home, making things, doing things. I knew that I really had no idea why. It was just meet and right so to do. It was good not to be our parents. It was good to be in life with those we brought into it. It was good to use what God gave me to do in ways that God gave me to do it. Is that why enough? Maybe. But I'm not alone in silence this morning, not even alone with God in this Lent. I am with Emily Dickinson's mind, she, one that she did not want to share but it has been fully shared for 75 years, much of it for over 100 years, with no ability to see how she stocked her shelves. Her mind was a larder of insight, made inscrutable at times by her expression, but to me made fresh every day, especially in Lent. And the author quotes, you'll find it when you try to die, the easier to let go for recollecting such as went, you could not spare, you know. He writes, is it projection to hear her seeing what I see? I am sure, some. She is, well, alive. He quotes again, and though their place is somewhat filled, as did their marble names with moss, they never grew so full. You chose the newer names, and when this world sets further back, as dying, say it does, the former love distincter grows and supersedes the fresh and thought of them. So fair invites, it looks too tawdry grace to stay behind with just the toys we bought to ease their place. He continues, with or without church, I cannot get away from God or these weeks, Emily. But if Emily is just an intellectual comfort food of indulgence, God is quite the opposite. To stay behind with just the toys we bought to ease their place, we with empty shelves. I share that with you this morning in particular as many of you find yourselves not only unable to get to your houses of worship, but unable to dine together and communicate together as we are so used to doing. I personally miss the top of the stairs and the bistro and the clanking and the laughing and the spilling of drinks, mostly me um, in my clumsiness, but I miss you all and I know that you miss each other. Please know that the chaplain's office is here 
by phone, uh, through these videos, by email. If you need something or you know of a neighbor who needs something, please call. And if you know of a neighbor who needs something, please reach out. We are the Seabury community. And even if it's just by phone, we can be present for one another. I know that many of you are not religious, but as is my practice, I would like to offer a blessing at this time. May the peace of God, which passes all knowledge and understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of our Lord and of his risen Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forever. Amen.